Hello and welcome to another episode of my Power Arm Project. This is going to be a two-part episode going over the latest prototype of functional power armor. With this first part being an overview and then showing the mobility of the suit, while the second part, released in a week or two, will be going over the general build and everything about it. This is now my fourth prototype, with the previous prototypes being either exoskeletons or exoskeletons with mock-up armor added over the top. This is now a fully wearable, fully armored suit albeit not with the motors attached yet, that is the next thing to do. One little disclaimer I do want to have before we go on is as you can see some of the edges are rough, the finish isn't as good as it should be or could be and will be on the next prototype. However, because of how many times I've had to cut pieces off, modify pieces, change things, even though I've wrapped it to try and make it look better, the finish has actually got worse as I've changed it, as is the nature of cutting down and changing composite materials really. There are things as well that aren't finished, like the helmet you can see around here, and there's no visor. So even while it does look rough, all of the materials involved are the materials that will get used at the end of the project in the final version. With perhaps the exception of a 3D printed out case, which is one of the ways I intend on having a much better finish for the whole design. So if I rotate the arm open, what you can see is it is in fact made with a carbon fibre internal exoskeleton structure with some aluminium still in place just because it bends easier for me and sees it with some basic neoprene padding to make it more comfortable and the armour itself is a multi-layered carbon ceramic Kevlar composite while testing has been limited being a civilian in the UK I have been able to test the armour and it will stop 556 out of a 22 inch barrel bolt action with standard ball ammunition and 25 yards and I'm sure I can improve on that with basically more funding for better ceramics that means in a rifle firing position, a military soldier would have around 95% coverage of his full body to stop a rifle with. This would of course give soldiers cleaner rooms much better protection, making them practically invulnerable to any sort of regular small arms fire, but it would actually also give the soldiers more time to recognise the targets, so it could actually reduce civilian casualties when room clearing. Not only that, due to the nature of the armour being able to stop high velocity projectiles, while also covering most of the body, Things like DJI Mavics, your, your regular drones, dropping grenades onto trenches and everything else that we now see in Ukraine, the chance of those small munitions actually harming the operator is incredibly slim. The armour is designed to be fully self-supporting onto the operator, so while they might feel more bulk, they won't feel the weight of it. And once the actuators are attached, they will act as essentially gravity assist, they won't make their operator stronger, it's not really needed because you can just go to the gym. Instead, it'll make the armour essentially weightless for the operator. Also, due to the self-supporting nature of the armour having its own spine and hips and everything else, it would allow you to carry heavier ammunition or more of it, which is becoming a bit of an issue with militaries at the minute because a soldier can only carry so much weight when it's all on their own spine and legs. This could allow for larger calibres to be carried while maintaining a large magazine size. Other points to note for this video is the pauldrons currently aren't real. That's just because I don't know how big the actuator is actually going to be, so I can't work out how far they need to sit out. So these are just mock-ups. This plate is also subject to change. I do have plans to make one that comes around the sides a bit more with a better Velcro pad and possibly lift the thigh arm up a little bit so this groin and waist pad can be a bit smaller. Also, as mentioned, the helmet is far from finished and neither is any form of neck support. There's plenty of ways you can do a neck support but I'm trying to come up with the simplest solution that won't break. I also want to be able to offer different helmets so one of the helmets I'll be making very soon is a fast helmet, a regular special forces helmet with a flip down visor that will stop rifles. With all that being said, we'll move on to the next location where I can put on the suit and I'll show you the mobility of the suit. So to put the legs on, you firstly need to take the rear armour off the back of the legs. These are held on with mainly velcro straps and hooks. You then undo the velcro that is on the inside which is attached to the internal exoskeleton of the legs. And then after unsecuring the toe cap and pushing it forward, you put your foot in first and then into your leg, lower it all down onto your leg and then reattach all of the said Velcro straps and attach the rear leg armour. It's worth noting that originally the idea was that the whole suit would be on a stand as one and you would step back into the suit and then attach it all around you. Unfortunately what I found was the legs need to be really tight to your legs and they particularly need to be tight to your shins. So actually going back into the suit it doesn't actually work for your legs. I am working on a different type of more mobile frame design to hang this thing off of, because ideally a black pull down machine isn't the ideal utensil for this. 
but nevertheless it is a case of sitting back into the torso putting the chest plate down over your head and then attaching the belt that holds the waist piece on I actually found a weightlifting belt to be the best thing for this I did try a carbon fiber belt that I'd made but it was frankly terrible so moving on to the arms you just slip the arms in at the forearm first and then attach the velcro straps on both the forearms and on the biceps and then attach the legs to the hips. Time taken to put on the suit is around 20 minutes and around four minutes to remove. And now for testing the mobility of the suit, just doing regular things like kneeling down, there'll be some laying down, some attempts at some press ups, as well as some mobility movements on the feet. This shows some range of movement between the supporting spine, as well as full range of movement through the shoulders. And I will just note that the waist plate isn't on at the minute because the velcro pad frankly isn't good enough for some of the stuff I'm going to do at the minute, will be in the future. Also the helmet currently doesn't have a chin strap and the pauldrons, just being prop pauldrons, they're just held on with little bits of velcro so they're not that secure for this stuff. And you can see at this point there's not much restriction in movement and mobility even though it is currently unpowered. And the suit currently weighs around 55 kilos, and that is my excuse for these press ups. One thing I will say is probably the hardest thing to get used to is your balance on certain maneuvers like this. And that's just because you're moving a lot of weight and then you've got to pull it back on your balance. Then there's just a little bit of exaggerated shadow boxing just to show that you can get those sharp twists in. I then went for a little challenge and tried to do a pull up in the suit and then tried to do a second one with the back of the legs off to see if it made it a little bit better, which it did, but not that much. But 55 kilos, my excuse. One little surprise I found when doing this testing is with the back of the legs removed, which don't weigh anywhere near as much as the front, it is substantially easier to move in, way more than what the weight would imply. And the back of the leg armour doesn't actually touch the back of the leg when it's fitted. There's just something about it being on that side of the bone that feels less natural to move in. So it is actually going to be worth seeing if I can just extend the front leg armour back a little bit and just ditch the back armour in general. This little clip just nicely illustrates the movement in the boots for both rough terrain, ankle movement, as well as the elastic Achilles heel. As well as showing the range of movement without it clashing with the other armour pieces. Finally, time for the full armour with helmet, pauldrons and waist pad. This is just some helmet movement with the help of support pads as a neck support, just a trial and experiment with it. Now there's some examples of firing positions with of course the airsoft gun. These while slow movements do illustrate quite effectively how much protection you really do have in that firing position with this armour on, as previously mentioned. Anyone with eagle eyes might have noticed I can't quite see down the scope with this helmet on. This could be solved with an offset scope mount, however this is also why I want to offer different helmets including just a visor design over a regular fast helmet. I decided to ditch the helmet and the pauldrons and the waist piece for these next sets of movements just so falling pauldrons and velcro straps didn't ruin the shots. A good sweep through to show the waist movement. I 
I was gonna throw myself down into the prone position and then I realized I had my friend's gas blowback airsoft magazines on my chest and they are not cheap, so slow it was. And to finish off the testing, just some magazine changes. And now herein lies my issue moving forward with the next prototype. Unfortunately, after having some injuries last year that resulted in having brain trauma, losing one eye, breaking a wrist, messing the bones up in my hand, being in two comas, having facial reconstruction, and putting light damage on my other eye, I can't make the same money that I used to a year and a half ago, two years ago when I started this project. I'm now at the point of running out of time because as I'm sure we've all felt, the cost of living's gone up, I've got less time to spend on this, I need to work more to earn less money. So if I can't find some help and some funding, unfortunately, I can't see how I can do the next to suit and get this actually a fully working thing. Which isn't just disappointing to me, it's a shame in general because it's so close to being actually done, it's now wearable. I know exactly what I need to do for the next version, I know how to produce it, I know how to get a perfect finish. But not only are the material costs potentially a problem, just the actual paying for my time to do it is really the big problem. So if anyone watching this has any ideas of how I can get military funding and be able to move forward with this and actually have this as a business, please let me know. There's one guy in particular that I really want to speak to if I can get his attention, and that's Richard Browning from Gravity Industries. He's the man who does the jetpacks. I think if there's anyone who can get me in front of the right people for this and get funding for this, it's most likely him. To my knowledge, he built those jetpacks himself. And then I believe being a Royal Marine Reservist, he has also been able to do testing with the military. I have to say it's not ideal having to present this version to any interested parties. I've never liked it to be in the next version, but unfortunately I've just run out of time and I'm running out of money. Well, that brings part one of this video to an end should be releasing the next part in the next week or so and then a few more on the helmet after that i hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe and again any thoughts on how i can get funding for this please comment down below thank you for watching